Hello, I'm James from College Living On. And today, I'm going to show you how to cleave a piece of wood. The technique of cleaving is when you use a tool to split down through the length of a piece of wood following the grain. Preferably the piece of wood has got long, straight grain and not knotty. Usually you're following straight through the middle or you're doing cross cuts, following down, riving it through. The main tools used for cleaving are either a fro, which is a sharpened tool with a handle, I'll show you in a minute how to use it, or an axe, preferably a side axe, and wedges, if needed for a larger piece, tap down through, or for smaller pieces, such as hazel or willow, you could use a bill hook. This is a piece of ash wood, and I can tell from the little sticky branches that this is the top of the tree, and that's the butt end of the bottom of the tree. So usually it's best to run from the top of the tree down to the bottom in case there's any branches or young branches if you go from the other end, it will want to follow the branch. And using the fro, which is a blade sharpened with double bevel and a handle, which you use as a lever, I'm going to find the centre of the tree. And I'm going to give it one firm whack. Just until the blade starts oh, biting into the wood. And you can see it's starting to split down the middle hopefully, of the tree. And then using a levering technique, I can slowly head further and further in. Now, if it starts to run from one side or the, over to one side or the other, which is called running out, if I keep going, it's gonna head and come out of the to one side. But you want to check both sides because sometimes there's a slight twist to the wood. So if it's twisting one way, you want to make sure it's trying to run down the middle. That side is actually still in the middle. This side is slightly wide on there. Okay, we're running through now, fairly straight. I'm going to lift it up. Sorry, it's better working height. And Let that wedge go down with it so you don't trap your fingers. And ready. There we go. Two pieces straight down the middle. There's the centre of the tree, year one growth, the pith. So now, if we wanted to split that again, a couple of taps to start it. You can see. We're going to get that split. We want it to follow this pith if we can. If it starts to run out, you put the pressure on the thicker side. It's broken through the knot. Put a wedge in. Save my fingers in case it springs back. And then little bit of run out at the bottom there, but I always try and make it a bit longer than I need so that you can choose the best piece. A couple of taps to bite it in. Following down the middle, we could use the cleaving break. And I'm going to force it in. So now, I'm going to have the thicker side on the bottom. It's still on the bottom. If it starts to go and run the other way, I'll flip it over. But so far, the thicker side's always on the bottom. And there we go. Slight run out at the bottom there, but luckily it's longer again than I need so I can trim it to length. And there we have 
four pieces of ash from one. The cleaving break has uh, multiple uses and you can use it for many different sizes of timber. It's designed so you have a front with a level piece and then set to the other side of the posts you have an angled piece that because of the two angles comes down in a triangular fashion so it can actually hold different size pieces of wood. This piece of hazel is about the smallest size it will do. So I'm just going to clean this up and just show you how to cleave hazel. This would probably, pieces of hazel like this were used for hurdles. So yeah, again, I'm going to start on the thinner end like I did with the ash and I'm going to find the pith. Okay, so I'm fine in the middle. I've got an angle that's slanted towards me so I can see the pith in the centre of the wood. Give it a couple of taps just to get a split and then I'm going to ease it in. And then hopefully that's running through the middle. And the same as using a bigger piece and trying to make it run down. So it's slightly thinner on one side than the other. And this is when I can use the break. So the fatter side points downwards, hold it in the break, and then you're going to be keeping a close eye on it, careful of your hands, always have your hands to the back. So I'm going to push, and then when it starts to tip the other way, you turn it over and push the other side. So there are two pieces from one round of hazel and pretty much running through the middle, you can see the pith from top to bottom. And then these were used in wattle and daub fence, wattle and daub housing in medieval times and traditional building, thatching, thatching spars and hurdle making. Mm -hmm.